Paxson Wojcik averaged 15 points, seven boards, and three assists last year at Brown while shooting 38% from three. If he comes anywhere close to those numbers this season at Carolina, the Tar Heels are going to be in great shape. But can he do it? You are Locked on Tar Heels, your daily podcast on the UNC Tar Heels, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey there, it's Wednesday, August 30th, 2023. Welcome into the Locked on Tar Heels podcast, the only daily North Carolina show out there. I'm your host, Isaac Shade, and joining me today is our guy, Coach Pack Kilby. Throwing up those deuces, you love to see it. We want to thank you for making Locked on Tar Heels your first listen or watch every single day. This episode of Locked on Tar Heels is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked on College for $20 off your first purchase. Pack, we need to start before we continue on in our summer preview series, uh, summer roster preview series, on obviously a, a somber note as we continue to think about the entire University of North Carolina community. Um, obviously, on yesterday's show, we talked about the unfortunate murder that had happened on campus on Monday. In the hours and the days since, we do know now more about the professor who lost his life. And, and so, Peck, just want to give a couple words about that uh, as we get into today's show. His name was Zhe Zhe Yen, an associate professor of P applied physical sciences, has been on the faculty at North Carolina since July of 2019. And, uh, Pack, where it starts to get really real for you and I is that um, <clears throat> Professor Young Yen was a father to two young children. And Pack, that, that is literally you and me, buddy. Um, and so I know that hits really close to home for you and I and others. Um, um, Chancellor Guskowitz said that the, the school, the university will be observing a moment of silence on Wednesday at 1.02 Eastern time. And so Pack, I just thought it would be appropriate for you and I and, uh, and the whole show to do that right now to join in with the campus community. So Nothing's wrong with your podcast feed. Everything's normal, but we're going to just take a moment and um, remember the life of Professor Zhe Yen. Pack, there's, there's no easy way to segue out of that. Um, thoughts continue to go out to Professor Yen's family, friends, all those uh, colleagues, all those affected. Um, Pack, there, there's no easy segue, but we're just, we're just going to do it um, because uh, people are, are tuning in, yes, to be able to discuss that with us, but also because uh, they need to be able to continue to having just some, some real life lived and to continue talking about sports. And so today... We are going to carry on our summer basketball roster preview series. We've gone through all the freshmen, Elliot Cadeau, Zayden High, and the sophomores, Seth Trimble, Jalen Washington, the juniors, Harrison Ingram and James Oconquo, the only scholarship senior, RJ Davis, and then Jalen Withers. Today, we move on to the transfer from Brown, Mr. Paxson Wojcik. And Pax, it's funny because your real name is Paxton. My oldest child's name is Paxton, and we're talking about Paxton. So literally my son, right before you and I hopped on to talk, had come out of his bedroom. Uh, he'd had a nightmare or something. So as I came in to talk with you, I said to my wife, all right, I just put down Paxton back to bed. I'm going to go talk to Paxton about Paxton. And uh, so I think I'm keeping this all straight here today, Pax, but we'll see. So as always, if you would, would you give us a, a rundown on Paxton's bio and then his stats from last year at Brown? Absolutely, yeah. So our man Isaac here, he went and found us a middle name this week. Yes, uh, I did. Got, Come on. <laughs> we've got Paxson Walker Wojcik. I love it. Uh, who's obviously a grad senior at North Carolina. A uh, little something I didn't know about him but learned here recently is that Paxson spent two years at Loyola Chicago under Porter Moser. 
and then he spent two years at Brown, and now he's at Chapel Hill for his grad senior year. Uh, position is guard, hometown, uh, Charleston, South Carolina. I could do that. Yeah, it's pretty good. <laughs> Height, six foot five, weight, 195. Jersey number eight, Ooh. which is um, made available to him by the new NCAA rules about number six through nine. And this is the first time number eight will be worn in a North Carolina jersey since Dick Patterson in 1949-1950 season. So it's been quite a while since we've had a number eight out there. And then Paxton is keeping it real with the Twitter handle and the Instagram handle. They're both the same. We love and it. His name, Paxton Wojcik. Uh, let me hit you with some stats. So last year he played for Brown, played 27 total games, started in all 27 of those games. Um, averaged 14.9 points per game, 7.2 rebounds, 3.2 assists, 1.8 turnovers per game, one total block, <laughs> uh, 1.3 steals per game, and then field goals, 137 of 297, which was good for 46.1%. Three-point field goals, 57 for 150, which is good for 38%. We'll take that. Yeah. Uh, free throws, 71 for 103, which was good for 68.9%. We will not take that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, Pax, some, some really interesting stat things for our guy Paxson as, as we look at this here. And I, I just want to start right there. Several questions, obviously, as we always do, that we want to start tackling. But I want to look at that really interesting stat line of last year averaging – 14.9 points. Let's just round it up to a nice 15. What do you say? 7.2 rebounds and 3.2 assists. Now, we, we often talk about anybody that's translating up to the high major level, we wonder what's going to translate, what's not. I, I think some of the prime people we think about with that are guys like Christian Keeling and Justin Pierce and Nicole Anthony, right? Like um, <clears throat> what, what all is going to translate. So for Paxson, I think a lot of that is going to depend on how many minutes he gets. But, but Pac, as you look at that line of like 15, 7, and 3, what, what do you think is doable for him this season? You know, it's hard to predict what his actual stat line might look like. But when I really get down to it, I, I think if I can just talk about how college has changed and how talent is – man, there's so much parity. There, it's – it wouldn't shock me to see him come to the high major level and, yeah. and be just fine because, well, he did fine playing against Carolina last year, quite frankly. You know, <laughs> I, I don't remember exactly what he had. I think it was 14 points, but which was right around his average, but he did fine, you know. And so um, I think he will translate well to this level. I don't expect him to play a massive, massive role, but I do expect him to play a role and I expect him to be able to shoot the ball well for us and provide some like seniority and some leadership and experience. Um, and, you know, it goes back to the Loyola Chicago thing that we were talking about him spending two years there. He took a trip to the sweet 16 with them. Now, granted, he knocked it off a of one seed in the process. Yeah. Yeah. And now he didn't play a lot, but he still experienced that. And he's bringing those types of experiences with him to Carolina. And I think that's just going to pay dividends for us. Mm. Interesting point. Yeah. Um, well, ultimately, Pac, what do you think? As you just said, didn't get a ton of run at Loyola in his first two seasons, but then had two really strong seasons at Brown. I, I, I'm with you. I, he's not going to get as much. Play. I mean, he averaged, what, 34.6 minutes last year at Brown. That, that, that's just not going to happen at North Carolina. Let's just see that as it is. We'll talk about his minutes per game in the over-under segment, by the way, so get ready for that. But, Pac... Is, is the success he had translatable, do you think, at the Carolina level? Is his talent, his athleticism good enough to get him to a place where, you know, he's instead of 15, 7, and 3, could he get enough minutes to get to 9 points a game, 5 rebounds a game, 2 assists a game? Like, is that translatable, do you think? I think it's translatable. Um, just hear me out here. You okay, know. I will. I'm I'm yeah. listening. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna play devil's advocate for a minute. Do it. Um, let's say Tress, Seth Trimble struggles. Let's say he's not shooting the ball that well. 
Um, that leaves us with RJ, Cadeau, Cormac, and who? Paxson Wojcik. So there's a chance there that he comes in there and fills a role for us uh, with his, you know, leadership, his, his experiences, the way he shoots it, the things he can offer that are different than what Seth Trimble can offer. Yeah. Um, I don't know. You know, to me, I think, I think there's a path for him there. Now I don't expect Seth to have a bad year. I expect him to have a pretty good one. And even if he does, I still think there's a role for, for Paxson. Um, but there is, you know, I see a path for him to get, you know, 15 to 17 minutes and have that nine, five and two type of stat line that you talked about. Hmm. I'd be okay with that for me. I think that's like the perfect kind of production from this guy, you know, probably when he's in probably playing the two or the three, not probably he'll be playing the two or the three and, and to be able to, to add that those rebound you had talked about recently, I forget which, uh, preview, roster preview show it was but just how we need help from all the available spots in rebounding and man if he can add five rebounds a game that would be massive well pack here's the thing paxton logic has a very interesting lineage and i'm wanting to ask you as a as a basketball mind as a basketball coach how that lineage factors into who he is his basketball iq and some other things we're going to have that conversation in just a second but before we get there, I want to tell all of you that today's episode of Locked on Tar Heels is brought to you by Game Time. Folks, life is crazy busy all the time. Last thing I need is to be stressed out trying to buy tickets to events. So thankfully, there's Game Time, which has killer deals on last minute tickets for all the events I want to go to. When choosing seats for events, also, I'm trying to figure out, do I have a good view? Is this a good seat? And that drives me crazy trying to figure out. But you don't have to worry about that with game time because they have images of views from your seats so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive. Forget trying to plan months in ahead. Game time is the place for last minute ticket deals. They have deals on tickets right up to the day of the event. Plus, you can get exclusive flash deals on tickets for football, basketball, concerts, comedy, baseball, theater, and more. Plus, the game time guarantee means that you'll always get the best price. If you find tickets in the same section and row for less, game time will credit you 110% of the difference. So snag the tickets without the stress with game time. Download the game time app, create an account, and use code Locked On College for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Locked On College for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. All right, Peck. So here's the here's the interesting thing. Probably folks are aware. I mean, it's been a, a, a big talking point of Paxson's commitment to the Tar Heels that his dad, Doug, was an assistant at UNC in the Matt Doherty era from 2000 to 2003. He was an assistant. Um, additionally, Doug himself and Paxson's mom, Lael, both played basketball at, at Navy. And currently, his Paxson's brother, Denim, is a basketball player at Harvard. Now, Doug today is an assistant at Michigan State with Tom Izzo. So thankfully, Paxson came to back home to North Carolina and didn't go off to East Lansing. You love to see it. Uh, in fact, neat factoid, Doug, Paxson's dad, helped recruit all five starters from the 05 championship team. That's pretty rad and a neat thing to be able to say. Pac, my question to you and for us to discuss is this. How helpful is Paxson's background, right? Like I, I know it's not, it doesn't necessarily translate into scoring eight more points a game. But when you think about having two parents who are basketball players in terms of IQ, in terms of DNA and genes that they pass on to you, in terms of having a brother who plays, in terms of all this background at different um, coaching at different places, how does that help what Paxson is able to do? Well, it helps a lot in a lot of different ways. You know, you kind of mentioned the IQ. Um, the nuances of the game, just growing up around a coach in a coach's house and in a family that apparently lives, breathes, and sleeps basketball just like we do. Um, you know, there's it, when it's a priority, there's growth that comes with that. And so, um, you know, it's just things like being in the right spot defensively and being coachable and the work ethic that you gain from that and the fundamentals that you probably have from all that and the habits that you've built those are things that he had an advantage of 
you know, being around his entire life. And I'm sure that helped lay the groundwork for him because I think we can all agree he's probably not in the top half of our roster when it comes to athleticism. But he does enough little things right with his IQ and the way he can shoot the ball and being in the right spot defensively that it allows him to be a successful basketball player. And those are the things that he probably gained. Hmm. I'm sure coaches and things had an influence on it too, but he had a good foundation from just growing up in a, in a coach's home, I'm sure. Um, and, you know, just real quick, back to that, Doug helped recruit all five starters from the 05 championship. Yeah. You know, a lot of people, we remember the Matt Doherty era poorly because there wasn't a whole lot of W's that came with it. But that man and his staff could flat out recruit. They got some dudes on that campus, man. Those guys, those guys can play. Yeah. Dude, anybody that can go get Scott May's son out of Bloomington, Indiana, and bring him to Chapel Hill, that person can recruit. You know what I'm saying? Like that, that alone is, is a thing. And so you that's a great point. And I, I think very well made. Now, uh, and obviously Paxson is a very bright dude. He play he went to an Ivy League school in Brown. I feel like Carolina's getting in all the smart people. Cormac Ryan was at Stanford and then Notre Dame, now at North Carolina. Harrison Ingram was at Stanford, now North Carolina. Wojcik was at I in the Ivy League school. We're, this is a smart team, my friend. They're going to challenge for highest GPA team on campus. We're just getting prepped up for Stanford and joining the ACC. <laughs> That's right. Dude, it sounds like it might be more real than it was. And also Stanford is going to be in battle for Atlantis with the Tar Heels this year. So that's interesting. Pack, here's the thing. This team needs shooting. No doubt. I mean, there's just no way uh, around that. You got RJ, as you talked about. Um, you've got a couple other guys you you expect and hope to fill it up. Cormac Ryan, hopefully Jalen Washington really gets that going and some others. Let's not forget, Paxson Wojcik is six feet five. Now, I know that's as tall as you are. And uh, listen, this, this is me to any of you six fivers right out there. I'm just looking up, craning my neck, trying to not stress. He's six five, playing the two or the three, career 36.4% three-point shooter. I mean, if he's doing that at his positional height, my man's going to be on the floor unless he's just a complete Kerwin Walton level liability on defense, right? Like, uh, because Carolina has to have that to take attention off of Armando Baycott, um, and, and you got to imagine somebody like Elliot Cadeau and RJ are going to be delivering the ball to Wojcik, to Cormac Ryan in space to be able to shoot. What, I, what, what does Wojcik need to do as a three-point shooter to utilize his size to translate up from that uh, Missouri Valley Conference level, from the um, Ivy League level, to do the same thing at the ACC and help Carolina find their three-point shooting moxie again? Well, you know, he's just got to play within himself. And mm. one of the things he does a really good job of, uh, you know, he, he moves well off the ball. And he has a high IQ for that and a good feel for that. And that's something we can really use. Um, Brady Manick was really good at that. You know, he could move off the ball and find these gaps that he could just – where he could catch the ball, catch and shoot in rhythm and knock down shots. And, you know, I see Paxton doing a lot of that for us. Mm in his role, you know, and, and I think that's going to be easy for him to do, you know, with, with RJ and Cado and Trimble and Harrison, these guys ability to create and get downhill. You just got to slide into a gap, have your hands and feet ready and knock them down. Go. He's good at, that's what he does. And so I think, I think it translates and I think he's going to be a much needed ad for us. And, you know, someone like, um, if if Cormac's not shooting the ball well, or if RJ's not shooting the ball well, then Paxton probably will be. You know, it's it just gives us added depth, at, you know, with, of people with the ability to shoot the ball. And because there's no way all three of those dudes are off on the same night. Exactly. Like, it's like maybe right. once or twice in the span of this season's 30 plus games, right? Uh, and so the, these guys that are 35 plus percent three-point shooters you're not holding all three of them down game after game after game that's just not real yeah yeah i think they're going to be um i think there's going to be times where they're all on though you know it's <laughs> going to be tough to guard and all of those guys have iq and good feel for getting open and knocking shots down and yeah. i just see him being able to do that for us 
uh, very effectively. Okay, but why doesn't it translate to free throws? 68.9% last year for a dude that's shooting just shy of 40% from three. How, how, how on earth do you step up to 15 feet away and not be able to do it? The only thing I can think of is, you know, that free throw line is just a mental block for him. Maybe mm-hmm. that's something he struggled with. Uh, his, I mean, I've watched him play a number of times. His mechanics are fine. Yeah. Uh, obviously, he's got a smooth stroke. His rotation looks good. All those things. I, I, it's, it's just got to be a mental block for him, you know. But hopefully, he's going to turn that around because this has a chance to be a really good free throw shooting team. <laughs> need that above 75. In, in the words of the cowbell sketch on SNL, don't blow it for us, Gene. And uh, we'll roll with that for Pax and Wojcik. If you don't know what I'm talking about, just go Google it. Blue Oyster Cult, one of the best Will Ferrell skits of all time. All right, Pat, you and I in DeMarco Dunn's roster preview show last year, it was probably our biggest miss in terms of the role that that player would play. I'm worried that I've done the same thing throughout this offseason about Pax and Wojcik. And from what I'm hearing from inside the Carolina camp, from what Coach uh, Robinson has been telling us, I, I'm a, I'm nervous that I'm doing the same thing with Pax and Wojcik that we did with DeMarco Dunn last season. We're going to have to take a look in the mirror and try to figure out if that's right. And we'll do that in just a second. All right, Coach Pat Kilby, Isaac Shade, we are here with you today previewing Paxson Wojcik transfer over from Brown for his graduate year. Pat, here's the thing. Last year, you and I, not that DeMarco Dunn set the world on fire last year, but we severely undersold in our predictions of what his role would be versus what it actually was. Um, a, A guard who we didn't think would get much burned, but got more than we anticipated and Again, while he wasn't phenomenal, I think he contributed more to the team than we thought. When Paxson Wojcik, and if I remember correctly, was the first transfer to commit to Carolina this offseason, I was like, oh, that's nice. It's like a a legacy thing because his dad was here and, you know, he's coming over from Brown. I don't know that he's going to be able to do all that much. I've grown in my fondness for Paxson Wojcik this offseason, and I do not want to do the same thing to him that I did to DeMarco Dunn. Pack. Do you think we have been selling Pax and Wojcik short of what his actual role and contributions will be to the 23-24 Tar Heels? Well, I, I don't know that I have been, but I think... <laughs> okay, just me then. Have I been selling him short? Well, and honestly, I don't know that you have been either, you know, because this is our first time to really dig in and talk about him. But, you know, my point is, he I think he flies under the radar. Mm. Uh, I think a lot of people looked at that and go, okay, they got Paxson Wojcik from Brown. Like, okay, you know, that doesn't really move my meter on them one way or the other. Uh, But to me, it does. And I don't know how big of a role he'll play. Obviously, there's a lot of questions with how big any of our bench players' roles will be. Um, (laughs) But the man can shoot it. And shooting is a high premium in college basketball right now. He's got something we want, something we need. And if he can do that, then he can help us. That's right. I just keep pointing back to Cam Johnson. Yeah. Going however high it was that he went in the draft. If you can fill it up and you've got size from outside, you're going to play basketball. You're going to find a place. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. And I think he can do some of that for us. Um, So I, you know, I, I think he's flying under people's radars. Um, I don't know how much he is for everyone, but, you know, for me, I expect him to, to really be able to help us because of that, that just just simply the fact that he can shoot the ball. Um, and I'll tell you what, though, don't don't forget about the other end of the floor. He's pretty scrappy defensively. Hmm. Uh, he's, he's one of those guys, he's not just going to get out there on the perimeter and just shut you down, but he's, he's always in the right spot. He's kind of sneaky with his hands. He takes charges. He does a lot of those things really well. And so he's not well, leaky, but he's also not Kerwin. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. He's got enough. He's enough uh, that like high IQ, headsy type ball player that he'll make some stuff happen for us defensively. And and I think another something we haven't talked about yet is I think another thing that 
he brings to the table is he just seems like a good team chemistry fit. Like it seems like he fits Carolina culture really well. He gets what coach Davis is trying to do. And it, it just, and I know from the outside looking in, you can't really ever tell what's going on in the locker room unless you're in there um, with them. You know, if, if you're a fly on the wall, but just feels like that side of it is there too. And man cannot mistake and overlook what kind of role that plays in bringing a team together. So Pat, all, all of these things said about like, hey, he, there's opportunities. He can do it. Got to make shots. Let's do our favorite thing that we do at the end of these roster preview shows over unders. I got three of them for you. We're going to start with minutes per game because I think that is going to be indicative of the over the other over unders and and what just what kind of stat lines and box score kind of things he can do. I think is going to be based in large part based on how often or not he is on the floor. So, Pac, I'm going to set the over-under on Pax and Wojcik's minutes per game at 10. I'll take the over. I'll take the over there. I think I've got him, you know, at least in my mind, somewhere between 11 and 12 minutes. Mm. What about you? That's that's where I'm at, too. I, I, th- I did my um, minutes breakdown show last week, and I think I actually put him at 10 or 12, somewhere in that range. So, yeah, I, I would go just – ever so slightly the over. Um, uh, and it's particularly if he keeps it up with shooting, I think if he sticks his nose in there, like if he, if he's rebounding at a high level to go with that shooting, that's a big win. And again, this is a team that's going to facilitate better. We look at everything that these other guys can do. Keep in mind, 3.2 assists per game from Wojcik last year. He's a guy that doesn't mind sharing the ball either. To that point, next over under from me for you. For us, excuse me, rebounds, five rebounds per game. And as a reminder, he averaged 7.2 last year. I'll take the under here. Um, You know, I've got him, like I said, between 11 and 12 minutes per game. Last year, he averaged seven rebounds and 34 minutes per game. So I'm going to take the under. Now, I do know, I realize he can rebound and he's going to have to rebound more for us than probably he had to at Brown just because of the size we'll be facing versus the size we'll be putting on the floor. Um, but I still feel I feel like he's going to be under that five rebounds per game. Uh, you know RJ is going to be stealing rebounds from him. He's like, get out of here, man. I'm trying to get the double digits over here. <laughs> All right, last one, Pac. Our man Paxson Wojcik is a career 36.4% three-point shooter. So I'm going to set his over under right there at 36%. He was over that last year. His first year at Brown was like 33, but both years at Loyola, even though he didn't play much, both years were over 40% there in Chicago, 36 from three over or under. You know, last year he was 38% and I like that. I like him to continue to stay above 36. Um, I'll even say, I I think he's, I think he's going to be right around 39, 40%. You know, it, it goes back to what I talked about earlier, just his IQ and ability to find gaps and find the right shots. Relocate and all that. Yeah. 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 And then mix it with guys on this team that, like you mentioned just a minute ago, they're unselfish. They're willing to find the open man. I think he's going to get some pretty good looks and I think he's going to take advantage of it. So I'll take the over. Man, yeah, that's really interesting. And I'm thinking of it in a similar vein, like as we've talked about with Harrison Ingram, where it's like, I think Harrison excels this year because he doesn't have to be the dude like he was at Stanford. I'm looking at Brown's numbers from last year. Um, Second most points on the team. um, Basically tied for the lead in team minutes per game. uh, Was second in in three-point attempts per game. All sorts of stuff like this was you know, as a guard was the second leading rebounder. And so it's kind of that similar thing that Harrison Ingram had to do at Stanford, where now he doesn't have to come be as much the guy. I mean, when he's on the floor, he might be the fourth or fifth option offensively. And that's a good thing because it's not like guys are going to be helping off of him because you got to stay out. But I think because so much attention is going to be paid to the black hole that is Armando. So much attention is going to be on RJ that if Paxson can find those seams, those openings, relocate well when the ball goes in, he going to find himself in a great position to shoot. So, yeah, I, I'm with you. Somewhere in that 36 to 40% range, but I'll take the over on 36% from three this year, and that means good things for the 23-24 Tar Heels. So from Paxton 
talking about Paxson and Isaac. This is a great uh, show today. Love uh, getting to kind of unpack somebody that I think might be a little under the radar, unheralded, but I think is going to jump up and surprise us. I think there's going to be some games where he's just a dude that, you know, comes off the bench and knocks down three or four threes. And it just puts the Tar Heel, like stretches out the lead or something. I just feel like there will be some of that from him. All right, Pack, the roster preview series rolls on next week. Cannot wait to keep talking about these Tar Heels. Folks, don't forget, football kickoff this Saturday in Charlotte. From all the indications I'm getting from the football SID from Jeremy Sharp, it sounds like the game is still going to be going on in his emails to us it's been saying see you all in charlotte so that that indicates to me that the game will still be on this saturday so get ready for that folks thanks so much for tuning in with us it means the world to pack and i that you would come hang out with us and talk about this it's just so much fun and hopefully again a, a nice breath of fresh air on what is a really heavy heavy and burdensome week you can follow the show on Twitter at Locked On Heels. My man Pack at Coach underscore K23. You can follow me at Isaac Shade. Email the show Locked On Tar Heels at gmail.com. Don't forget to subscribe anywhere you listen or watch podcasts. Smash the like button. We love to hear your comments on Pax and Wojcik as well. Want to remind you, it's always a great day to be a Tar Heel. I'll be right back with you on tomorrow's show. You know it's going to be awesome. Pack knows it's going to be awesome. But until then, peace.